Uh, welcome to our 90th episode of the HE Lounge webinar sessions. Uh, thank you for your support, those who have been joining us. Well, we have been particip participating in these discussions. I'd like to thank you. We have been making this a success. So, and uh, also special thanks to Terra One Center for Learning for NASA and Zayosh for their support and their sponsorship. They are also the guys behind the success of these sessions. So I would like to appreciate their support. So without taking much of our time, uh, our today's agenda will start off with a toolbox talk uh, on workplace housekeeping. Oh, I, I am the one who's going to be presenting on that and see up the discussion with you guys. Then we'll jump, on, jump in into our main topic of the day, which is the environmental impact of shutdowns. And we have a guest presenter for that, that is Mr. Kajamadare. Uh, welcome, Mr. Kajamadare. So for a few housekeeping rules, uh, if you are not the one who is uh, talking or contributing, you should mute your microphone to avoid uh, some background noises. And also, uh, you can, it's optional to leave your video on or off uh, for network issues from our end. Sometimes you switch it on, sometimes you switch it off because of network. But if your network is powerful, you're free to, to, to leave it on. Uh, then for other comments uh, and other contribution, you can also make use of the chat section. Uh, we can refer to those uh, contribution uh, in, in, during the session. So, yeah, welcome everyone. We are looking forward for a great session and a great discussion. Uh, let's enjoy, guys. So, let me jump into the toolbox talk. Uh, let me quickly share my screen with you, which is on housekeeping. On workplace housekeeping. So effective uh, workplace housekeeping uh, can eliminate uh, some of the workplace hazards. So it is a good practice to to maintain our housekeeping within our workplaces. That is conversely, uh, poor housekeeping can lead to, to workplace injuries. So what is housekeeping? Uh, housekeeping, uh, some of you may know it as trash picking. Uh, some of you can define it as cleanliness, but it is not just about trash picking or cleanliness. It's, a, it's also about keeping work areas neat and uh, orderly, and also it entails the layout of the whole place. That is the eye of making the articles of our uh, storage facilities and the maintenance of all these. So with housekeeping, we are talking about the, uh, about uh, cleanliness, uh, keeping work, play, work, work areas neat and orderly, and also the layout of the workplace. So why is it, uh, what is the purpose of housekeeping within our workplace? Uh, housekeeping uh, can cause, poor housekeeping can cause uh, accidents such as sweeping over loose objects on floors, chairs, and platforms. I, I guess everyone has been a victim of such incidents where you trip over something that has been dropped on the floor, but no one had uh, picked it up. And also it's uh, poor housekeeping can also, also cause accidents such as being hit by falling objects. For instance, someone is working on a scaffold, they just drop their hammer uh, on, their, on their working surface, then they kick it with their hand. Someone below that, 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 that scaffold can be hit by those falling objects. So it is very important to, 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 to promote housekeeping whenever, whenever you're working. Also, sleeping and greasy or wet and dead surfaces can also cause accidents because of poor housekeeping. Uh, and also, you can also be a victim of cutting, puncturing, and tearing of the skin or of the hands of the body uh, whenever you come into contact with nails or wires or steel stripping that have been left or on the ground randomly. 
So to avoid these hazards, uh, a workplace must maintain order throughout a workday. Although this effort requires a great deal of management and planning, and the benefits are many. And some of these benefits are uh, include reduced handling uh, to ease the flow of materials. Uh, we are saying with housekeeping, uh, you are labeling your uh, your tools, uh, these uh, speci specified uh, storage facility for tools that uh, that tools reduces the handling and is the flow of materials. For instance, someone is using a, a spanner and they are done using it. There is a specified place to, 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 to store that tool so that the next person that would want to use that certain tool will just go to, onto that storage facility and just and just and just pick up the the tool, and it also uh, results in fewer tripping and falling accidents that I violated before, and it also de decrease decrease the it also results in decreased fire hazards. It also better control the control of tools and materials, the one I was talking about, and uh, it increases the efficiency of equipment cleanup and. Uh, and maintenance. Uh, housekeeping can also benefit our hygienic conditions, leading to, to improved well health within our workplaces. And uh, because our uh, workplaces will be clean, because of our, our workplaces will be orderly maintained, it, uh, it gives more effective space whenever you're working. Uh, and also, housekeeping can lead to less janitorial work. Uh, in, uh, in summary, we say housekeeping promotes safety. That is uh, the main, the, the key important issue with workplace housekeeping. So for our uh, housekeeping program, our housekeeping program uh, manages the orderly storage and movement of materials within the workplaces. Uh, as I was highlighting about the tools, that there should be a specified place well labeled for, for storing certain tools if it is a 32 size spanner, it should be stored in a, on a shelf, shelf labeled 32 size spanner so that the next person that would want to use that tool would just go onto that shelf and pick the tool rather than looking for the previous person who was using the tool. And that, that person would want to search where he had, uh, put the tool that laid uh, our way. And also, a housekeeping program should include material flow to ensure minimal handling. The, the, uh, the example I was highlighting also. And it ensures work areas are not used as storage areas. That is to say, when you are working, you, just, you don't just drop your hammer besides you and pick another tool and start working. That will minimize your work press and increase your potential of becoming a victim of certain uh, hazard of certain incidents. And uh, worker training is an essential part of, uh, of the program. Uh, we are saying uh, whenever we are promoting a housekeeping tool, a housekeeping program, uh, the employees should be trained on these things, how to, how to order, maintain the, the housekeeping program uh, and how to, to label their shelves, how to, to transfer tools whenever they are working. And also, the program, the program identifies and assigns responsibilities for, for cleanup during the shift. That is whenever someone is working, working you don't wait for the, for the end of the shift to, to then clean up your area. You just clean as you, as you go. Uh, it also in, uh, assigns responsibilities for day-to-day -day cleanup, for waste disposal, and for the removal of, of unused materials, that is to say, when you are working with uh, on a certain material, maybe you are replacing uh, a certain equipment. The, the 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 old equipment should be removed from your from your working area and stored somewhere that where it will be where it will not pose as a hazard. And the key component, the ultimate key of uh, any housekeeping program is the inspection to ensure cleanup is complete. Uh, whenever someone is working. So the, the elements of an effective uh, housekeeping program are, includes uh, dust and dirt removal. Uh, we are saying uh, in our workplaces, 
maybe uh, we are working in an enclosed workplace where there's little or ventilation or the exhaust uh, ventilation systems are sometimes can fail to 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 pick up some of the dust within our workplaces because of the hard uh, hard to reach areas such as corners or those should be cleaned uh, manually maybe using vacuum cleaners that is um, uh, but you don't uh, let me highlight this you don't use the compressed air i've seen it uh, in some work workplaces people ought to 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 use uh, compressed air to remove dust in, in those that to reach areas but that is not a safe practice. And also, employee facilities, those ones should be cleaned. They, we are talking about the tea rooms, we are talking about the ablution facilities. They should be well cleaned, well maintained uh, to, to, to promote hygiene also. And uh, working surfaces, we are saying poor flows, poor working surfaces can, can pose as hazards whenever someone is working, if you spew off uh, oil in, at your working area, you should, clean, you should clean it up instantly so that you remove a, a slip, slipping and falling hazard. And also, you should maintain light fixtures within your working areas. There are certain uh, rooms that you find a uh, light bulb uh, is full of dirt that uh, it is no longer emitting uh, su sufficient light in the work, work area. So those, so those light fixtures should be maintained and cleaned to, so that uh, if they will emit uh, sufficient light. And also our aisles and our stairwells, they should be also be cleaned uh, to remove any obstructions, uh, especially whenever there's an emergency. Uh, you don't need... Uh, you wouldn't want to, to have obstructions in those areas because they will escalate the situation whenever people are stampeding and people are falling because of those obstructions. So aisles and stairs should be kept clear of anything uh, to, to allow safe passage of, of people and vehicles. And also the, uh, an effective uh, housekeeping pro program should entail spill control. That is to say, whenever you spew anything instantly, you should clean it up, be it oil, be it water. You don't wait uh, to finish up what you are doing so that you can clean it up instantly. When, whenever you spew something, you should clean it up. Then it also, with, uh, with reference to tools and equipment, uh, those ones should be, should be kept uh, uh, in shelves that are well labeled. They should be repaired. Uh, for maintenance, that is to say, every tool should be in a uh, in good in good operating uh, state so that it won't pose as a hazard. It's, that is another housekeeping uh, practice. Uh, and uh, every tool that is that is uh, that has been found to have defects should be well labeled so that if you leave a grinder that is that has faults on the ground without labeling it or without indicating that this grind is for the next person that will come for another shift to just pick it up and use it and maybe that can, uh, that can lead to an incident so our tools and our equipment should be well labeled and should be well maintained and repaired and our maintenance of all of these i've been mentioning is another uh uh housekeeping practice that uh that can be promoted in our workplaces and, uh, and another element of our housekeeping program is waste management. That is the collection, the handling, the sorting of waste. Uh, I have uh, the, the Environmental Management Act has promoted uh, waste segregation. I, I, I guess everyone has I've been hearing about this for years. That should be that should be promoted in our workplaces as a, in our housekeeping programs. For safe and for, 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 for safe management of waste. And also, there should be storage facilities for everything. That is to say, a place for everything, and everything should be in its place. Sometimes it's because you don't know where to put uh, a certain to a certain equipment. That's lead, that can lead you to just place it wherever you want, and uh, ending up having uh, a 
a cluttered or clustered, a cluttered uh, working area. So the do's for housekeeping uh, involves uh, minimizing fire hazards by keeping a workplace free of accumulated combustible materials and waste. Uh, the place of trash and scrap in uh, proper containers, that is waste management. Uh, the storage of equipment and materials in their assigned location, uh, I've highlighted uh, that. Uh, and also the cleanup of spills uh, promptly according to procedures using protective equipment where necessary. And uh, also the uh, dumping uh, small containers into large ones and keeping uh, only enough combustible material its job site for job for for job uh, at hand and the don'ts when it comes to housekeeping you don't you do not pile up material around fire extinguishers or sprinklers uh, you do not clean equipment without looking out and uh, you do not blow off dust with compressed air I, have, I guess I have uh, I laid that that you should use a vacuum cleaner or a brush. And you should also collect broken glasses and metal scrapes in plastic. You do not, oh sorry, you do not collect broken glasses and metal strips in plastic bags. And you do not uh, use bare hands when collecting waste. Where you should wear gloves to avoid cuts and splinters. And you do not place materials uh, on sales that can obstruct the safe passage of people. So that is a typical example of uh, poor housekeeping. And uh, on this other picture, you can see this guy is actually working uh, on, a, on a work area that is poor housekeeping conditions. So ladies and gentlemen, housekeeping uh, should be achieved, should be maintained, not achieved. That is to say, you don't wait for the end of the shift to start cleaning up your working area. You should clean it up as you go. Whenever there is unwanted uh, equipment, you should remove it on site, then place it somewhere where it is safe to keep your work areas safe from any hazards. And with that, I would like to thank you for this presentation. And I'm opening this time to the audience if there are any questions and contributions additions or subtraction or anyway you might need clarity okay i guess the silence uh, until that everyone is understood the session uh, so let's promote our good housekeeping practices in our workplaces to reduce incidents to reduce to eliminate some of the hazards in our workplaces and keep everyone safe is everyone should go home the way they have come into our workplaces. So with that, I would like to thank you for giving me this opportunity.